the birth of mankind. The achievements of man have been handmade. However, there is a new way of production. A new way of life. The Industrial Revolution. And it's coming to the United States. The Industrial Revolution began in Great Britain. From 1730 to 1800, many mechanical ways of weaving cotton cloth changed the way Britain and eventually the world would produce clothing and other goods. Cotton used to be a luxurious textile, but later it became the cheapest textile in the world because of how fast and efficiently it could be made with machines. Before any other country knew how to produce this textile so efficiently, Britain had monopolized the textile industry. Due to this great success, uh, Britain forbade any exporting of the machinery as well as emigration of its people. In 1789, the father of the American Industrial Revolution, Samuel Slater, had arrived in America from Great Britain. In his mind was the power to change the whole lifestyle for America. He memorized the textile machines of his homeland all the way down to the fine detail. I mean, talk about commitment. This memorization made him dangerous for Great Britain and even more so during the Embargo Act in 1812 when the cotton textile industry could really develop for America. Although he had great power and edge, Slater's knowledge was useless without a company. In 1790, Slater signed a contract with the textile company in Providence, Rhode Island with his promise that, if I do not make as good yarn as they do in England, I will have nothing for my services, but will throw the whole of what I have attempted over the bridge. With that promise, the first industrial company was made, and so was America's time to develop. Once adopted by the British, Americans took in industrialization as a lifestyle. Henry David Thoreau once said, the country's rapid physical and technological growth during the early 1800s caused Americans to look to the future with unbridled optimism. The fact of the matter is, without this change in the way typical Americans live their lives now, the way we view the American dream today would not have been enough. The Industrial Revolution showed a shift from the typical farming tools to complex machines in order to get more products out faster, more efficiently, and in more abundance. These machines were properly maintained by hundreds of workers inside a factory. Each worker was responsible for one piece of building of a much larger product. Industrialization caused the social view of working to split into two different categories. Industrial capitalists who owned and operated factories, and industrial laborers, the people who worked in them. Many people abandoned the agricultural lifestyle in pursuits of success from the factory by either running one or working in one. Quiz time. When I was working on the farm, I did what needed to be done when it was necessary. Now these dang factory owners want me getting up at the crack of dawn just to sew some ladies' god dang britches. It's so, all so fragging monotonous. Like those video games kids keep playing nowadays. I feel like nothing about my job has meaning except the paycheck I get at the end of the week. The Industrial Revolution is fueled by James Watt's improvements on the steam engine which powered other inventions such as the steamboat and the locomotive. These inventions greatly improved transportation within the United States and the heavy use of canals made New York an economic powerhouse of the United States. Imagine the Industrial Revolution is like a... Uh, like, like a cell, alright? Like a human eukaryotic cell, alright? The steam engine is the mitochondria of... Of, of, or the powerhouse of, of this cell. Other important inventions, such as the cotton gin and sewing machines, increased the speed of production, which allowed the southern states to produce more cotton. 
This created more factories able to manufacture the raw material into clothes, increasing the number of industrial jobs in the United States. It was not fun times working in these factories though. Some of the conditions were so awful that workers sometimes refused to work in them. Keep in mind this is a time before the whole germ theory. Most companies also looked for cheap workers and exploited it in child labor, which isn't banned until 1938, well after this industrial revolution. But people were not so quick to join the industrial bandwagon. Many believed that their freedoms were ignored and that it was too risky an investment. Even Thomas Jefferson, an agrarian enthusiast, once said, Those who labor in the earth are the chosen people of God. While we have our land to labor then, let us never wish to see our citizens occupied at a workbench or twirling a distaff. While Jefferson didn't approve, he also knew that agriculture would be phased out by industrialism eventually. The Embargo Act of 1807 showed how inept America was at self-sufficiency, and the production of manufactured, not produced, goods greatly increased their economic independence. People moved from rural farms to factories and cities, no longer living off the fat of the land, but living in apartments in eastern cities. This changed the mostly rural agrarian United States into an urban population who gets their food from the market and not their own farm. Many different peoples of varying social status were now able to interact with each other. We see this constantly in today's America. Cities such as New York and Philadelphia house millions of people into small apartments due to all of the job opportunities those cities have to offer. Owners of certain companies usually live in more expensive apartments closer to the center of the town and to all the main attractions the city has to offer. The workers, however, would live in what some refer to as the slums of the city on the outskirts of the city's boundary. But keep in mind, the conditions of today's cities are much better than those of the early 1800s. In those times, things like human waste and trash were just floating around in the streets everywhere. And there was more significant social difference between the homes of owners and those of workers. The conditions of the cities were not the end of it. The factory workers also worked in terrible conditions. The only light that would illuminate the rooms was the sunlight that shined from the windows. The smoke from the machines caused workers' faces to be covered in soot. Many machines did not have safety precautions, which resulted in many injuries. Children suffered the most, only earning 10 cents an hour for 14-hour workdays. The children developed severe physical deformities from lack of sunlight and physical activity. This is what really led to labor unions. In an effort to improve the working conditions of the factories, the laborers organized labor unions. The first labor unions were formed by the skilled craftspeople, which included carpenters, shoemakers, and printers. A trade society was created to improve work life and eventually increase the wages of each employee and granting them shorter work hours as well. By doing this, businesses became what is known as closed shops, where only union workers could be employed there. Some cities formed citywide federations, one of which eventually led to a strike all across Philadelphia, demanding that employers grant them a 10-hour workday as opposed to 12 to 13-hour workdays. This form of protesting has transcended into today's typical working environment. We saw it a few years ago with all the Walmart strikes, and we continue to see it now. All strikes would tend to revolve around issues such as work, time, pay, and benefits. All of this happening during the Industrial Revolution, a new revolution, or better off being called a process, is the market revolution. This revolution was a change in the way goods were produced. Goods used to be produced for just that country to use. Now with the invention and improvement of the steam engine, the goods could be produced for sale to other countries as well as the producers themselves. This process developed into what is now the modern commercial economy and how things are done today. Oh yeah. The Industrial Revolution was just the beginning of what the United States would look like for several centuries later. This has become a crucial piece of America's nationalistic identity as a nation and served as a new source of income for its citizens. Now with institutions such as the stock market, ordinary people would have the chance to benefit from these factories. Without the Industrial Revolution, America would have been left in the dust of the progressing European nations. Instead, 
of the powerhouse country we all know today.